your actual dog projects, we have rally, showmanship, dog obedience, you and your dog, the dog achievement project. We have all about dogs, which you don't do not need a dog to be able to take that project. And we have pet pals and we have agility. Um, a lot of the 4 Hers like to do dog obedience and that is really fun, but you really have to have a lot of patience and a good sense of humor. Um, you have to work your dog and train it several times a week and it will show in the end. It's a lot of hard work, but it will benefit you in the end. Um, we will also be going over the different classes that obedience has to offer. So those of you, this is your first year dog obedience, you'll be in beginner novice A. And to do that, you will be working with your dog, teaching it how to heel on lead, a figure eight, a sit for an exam, a sit stay, and a recall. And that recall is where you leave your dog when the judge tells you to and go six foot away and then call your dog. Um, beginner novice B is um, the heel on lead. This is for the second year um, 4-Hers. And you will be in figure, do a figure eight, a sit for an exam, a sit stay, walk around the ring and recall off lead. Once you place first place in beginner novice B, then you move, you can move up to pre novice or preferred novice. And preferred novice is something new this year. So I don't think we're going to have a lot of participants in that class. But your pre novice is heel and lead, figure eight, stand for an exam, recall, a long sit and a long down for one minute. And I think that's about as high as we will go this year in a lot of 4-H projects. Do you agree, Joe? And so you train with a lot of positive reinforcement. So that means you're constantly training your dog and giving it treats and positive words of encouragement and happy voice. So you want to train your dog about 30 minutes every day with like train 10 minutes, have a rest, train 10 minutes, random times a day. You can do this in the house, you can do it outside. But the important thing is that you have fun with your dog and you build a bond with your dog. And so um, you will need to have this book. It's your dog resource book. You can get it from the educator's office. Um, and this is the one you need if you're taking obedience or you and your dog. And I, um, you, showmanship, we look at that book as well to see if it's filled out correctly. If you do all about dogs, this is the book you'll need. Um, there is another one, the dog achievement and you earn badges for your participation in that, and you don't have to show your dog at the fair with that one. Um, Joe, what else am I forgetting? Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. Um, I just think uh, if you could, if you wanna tell them, you know, just like the specific things that they would need to, you know, like the differences between the projects, because I know we always have a, a lot of confusion about, you know, which. If what, this is what? your first year, I think I've seen three hands raised. You want to sign up for beginner novice A. Okay. And with that project, you will not, um, we have signs that we put out for your course. And then when the judge tells you forward, you will go to that sign and do what that sign tells you to do, whether it's a sit stay, uh, left turn, right turn, something like that. The judge will not call out the commands for you. You will just read signs in beginner novice A and B, and that is timed along with the judge deducting points. 
for your deductions of when the dog messes up or if you mess up. Um, if your dog does mess up in the show ring, I tell all my kids, do not correct your dog. Let the dog lose points, not you. Uh, so you'll be teaching your dog how to do the sit, how to heel right beside of your left leg. Um, it will be doing the stand for an exam or sit for an exam. That's where a stranger will come up and touch your dog on the head or on the body, and the dog has to sit perfectly still. Um, and your dog will have to let you pick up its feet one foot at a time. It will let you check its ears to make sure the dogs have clean ears. We'll check the nails to make sure your dogs have their nails cut, the hair between the pads. So you'll need to get your dog ready to be handled quite a bit, not only by you, but by strangers. Um, then in, um, let's see here. That's about all there is in beginner novice A and B. Like I said, they repeat. Um, let me find my notes here. Do we, have, begin, huh? do we have any, the other kids, what, what level did they, did they say what level they would be? They didn't read it. What, so if you're not, if it's not your first year, how many years have you been showing dogs, the rest of you? If you guys, you can unmute yourselves and tell or you can type it in the chat box. I seen three hands raised when I first asked that this was their first year. So we have Pey Peyton, Peyton says second, second So did you win first place last year? Because that that what how you place depends on yeah. pardon yes i did okay you'll move up to beginner novice b okay. okay uh you will be doing your heel on lead a figure eight on lead sit for an exam and sit stay and you walk completely around a show ring which should be about 20 feet and then recall off lead Okay. Okay. Thank you. And Anyone in pre novice? Is this your first year? Okay, you're in beginner novice, say. Okay. And you will be doing heel on lead to figure eight, sit for an exam on lead, sit stay on lead, and a recall on lead. Okay. All right. What are there any of, I was going to say, are there any of you that are, so Teresa has been talking about um, obedience classes. Are any of you signed up for other dog projects? Me. Like um, any of the other dog projects? Yeah, you're I am. I'm doing showmanship. And you and your dog. And you and your dog. Okay. Okay. Good. Teresa can talk a little bit about those for us. Okay. You and your dog, there will be questions posted on the Ohio 4-H dog program website. That, and out of 50 questions, the judge will choose like five to 10 questions. But those questions that's posted on the Facebook page is in your project book or your uh, dog resource book. So you have to study this book to find your answers. There will not be any questions that will not be found in that book, okay? And basically it's the same thing, questions on showmanship as well. Do you have a showmanship lead? Do you have a showmanship lead? Yes. Okay. All right, that's I brought one in case anyone didn't know what it was. <laughs> Okay, and what, what breed do you have? Sorry, go ahead. What, did you ask Peyton what breed she had? Yes. Oh. An English Bulldog. 
Okay. What some other breeds do we have showing this year? Australian catalog. Okay. Anyone else? Sadie, what kind of dog do you have? Um, I have a Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> oh, there it is. I'm currently working with him. I have Good. Um, so what like projects? Two weeks till mine, so I got to practice a lot. <laughs> okay, what county are you from? Jackson. Yeah. Okay. Do you are you in a 4-H dog club? Um, yes, the Canine Clovers. Okay, uh, Deb's your advisor, correct? Yes, Debbie Willis. Yes. Okay, so she will make it fun for you this year. Okay. All right. So, do we have any other questions on this? No. Anyone taking Pet Pals project? No? Okay. Joe, is there anything else? Do, do you want to, um, did anybody have any questions about like the difference in, I know I always, we get questions from 4-H members about like what, the difference is in like the dog achievement program versus you and your dog versus all the different there. What is, there's one other one, Teresa too, isn't there some all the, about dogs, all about dogs. That's the one, not the dog achievement program. The all about dogs versus like you and your dog. Would you explain the difference to them? So maybe they, the understand. all about the all about dogs, no dogs required. Okay, so if you've got a dog, fine, but if you don't, that's fine too. So you just learn like the different potty languages, some of the things like that. You learn your breeds of dogs and a little bit about the history of them. Um, you learn the background of where they came from. You might even be learning the different brushes on grooming and why you use that certain brush or certain scissors. You'll learn about diseases. Um, and you'll also learn body parts, good old body parts on the dogs. And just basic things like that on even on the collars of the dogs and what kind of coats they have. And so it's really interesting even if you don't have a dog and you want to take this and learn about them, and then maybe next year you can take your dog project and have a real dog, that would be great as well. And then do any of you, and you may not know if you're a first year person, but do you, do your counties offer rally um, as an activity at your dog show? If so, um, Teresa might be able to explain the rally activity. I know it's one of the more popular ones at our dog show. Does it, does everyone know what rally is? Yes. Yes. Have you, have you participated doing rally? Yes. And what's your favorite part about it? <laughs> you, you don't like it. <laughs> um, to be honest, I didn't really enjoy it. You didn't. <laughs> What didn't you like about it? Um, just my dog was really stubborn and didn't really listen to me. No, okay, we can overlook that one. Uh, anyone else <laughs> participated with Rally? No? Do you, um, have you seen the Rally signs for the new ones? Let's see if I got a couple Rally signs here for you. Here's just an example of what a rally sign looks like, okay? And we will have a course, and that's where we have different um, 
signs. It's almost like a map. And you will follow the directions. Can you see that without a glare? It's not very helpful. But it'll be like um, start and then you go slow pace, a normal left turn, about turn, right turn, um, normal pace, fast pace. And instead of me calling out the commands as a judge, you'll just read these signs like a bunch of traffic signs. And a lot of people really enjoy that, but apparently there's one out there that doesn't like it. <laughs> but maybe you can practice this year and get a little bit better with it, okay? She must be gone again. Any other questions? Well, this is a quiet group. In 4-H, we'd like for you to have a six foot lead. It can be leather or nylon. Some people use this. This is a slip collar, but it needs to be on correctly on your dog. So this is the way I learned to do it. If it doesn't let up, it's, too t it's on the wrong way. But if you do it this one, it lets up, it's on correctly. Um, and this is my nylon lead, the brand new one I've not even really used yet. But a lot of stores will try to sell you a heavy lead, but you only need a lightweight and you need six foot, not a two foot and not a four foot. And um, this, for those that doesn't know, this is my show for showmanship. This is my showmanship lead and collar, same way, okay? But this lead is four foot, but you don't need all of that. We always take it up and put a rubber band around it. Um, some of the things to do when you go to dog practice or your dog shows, I take an old book bag and I put items in it that I might need, whether it's my brushes, some dog treats, some water, always have a water bottle with you, have dog water bowls, and sorry, but you need to have something to clean up after your dog if it uses the bathroom, okay? And that way, when you're training, you've got all those treats for reinforcement, you've got nice cold water, and you've got something to clean up your messes. And hand sanitizer in there too, okay? But always take that with you to a show or to your training, if you train with someone, okay? Joe, is there anything else? It's very short. I think we still have a few minutes. So do you guys have questions for Teresa? Teresa is also a judge. So she, you know, she can answer any questions about what to expect mm -hmm. at judging if you guys have a dog show. Um, I know that some counties have canceled their dog shows for this year. Some counties have postponed. Um, so you know, it, it varies from county to county on, on what they're doing. Um, but if you have questions, even if you don't have a show this year, but you will be showing next year, if you've got questions about what to expect at the dog show, if you have one, um, Teresa's a great resource to ask those questions. Do we know, I'm sorry, my name's Brittany, I'm Peyton's mom. Do we know what counties are definitely going through and what it'll look like? Um, we're in Medina County and they canceled our fair and put it back on, but I haven't got anything in detail as far as, um, yes, we are gonna be showing virtually or actually at the Kennel Club like they did last year. Do we know that or are we still waiting for some of that stuff to come out? I think that just, that's all varying from county to county at this point. Okay. Um, I know, you know, some counties I've heard have totally canceled stuff. Other counties are going with virtual shows. Others are postponing until later in the year. So you may just need to, um, you know, send a message or call um, Morgan at your extension okay. office and she can probably let you know where they stand on that. 
in our county, our our dog show should have been um, what, July, 9th. July 9th. Yeah. Um, so we, because we knew our kids in our dog program have not been able to meet with our dog clubs and actually, you know, because they usually, Teresa's club, they meet weekly and work their dogs. And so, um, you know, with people not being able to meet face to face, we have, we've postponed in Scioto County and we'll probably offer something later in the year to give kids time to actually, hopefully, we'll be able to, you know, have those in-person meetings and then do something for the kids later. Um, but it just varies from county to county. So you'll just want to check with your, um, your county extension office to see. I know uh, one of the counties next door to us, their county fair is actually in, what, just like a couple weeks, and they, they canceled you know, they canceled everything. So um, it's, it's just varies. <laughs> We're all over the place this year. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, thank you. I'll reach out to Morgan because I know that the kids had, um, were going to the kennel club a couple times a week to practice and we haven't been able to do so. All right. Um, I know the state fair has been, dog show has been canceled. Yes. And there is quite a few clubs that's doing the virtual dog shows. If you would like to get on the, the Ohio State Dog Facebook page, there's listings of the shows coming up. Um, I just recently judged some, and it's kind of interesting to do it virtual. Okay, great. So you can videotape. You as a parent call out the commands and the child you videotape the child. There's certain requirements, certain angles you have to be at to record, and then you post it online, and then it's judged, and it's it's interesting. Awesome. Thank you. I'll look into that. Okay. Any other questions before we leave? No? Everybody's... Teresa, did you say that that was on the Ohio 4-H um, face dog program has a Facebook page that that information's on? Yes, I just seen it right before we went into Zoom. Athens County set up one and there was another county. Okay, so yeah, for any of you guys that are doing dogs, you might, even if you kids don't have Facebook, because I know most kids don't have it, but if you have a parent or someone who does have Facebook and you have them um, follow that uh, Ohio 4-H dog program Facebook page, then you might have see some opportunities and um, different things that you can participate in or um, be a part of. Butler you know. County just did four shows and then they also did you and your dog. They did showmanship, obedience. Were everything. those open to people outside of their county as well? Yes. The, the first two was closed just their county and then they uh -huh. opened it up. Okay. So they had that's kids from Athens and different places showing. Okay, good. So that's something to check out and participate in if you're interested in it. Okay. So can you can you show share that, Joe? Um, I'm typing into the chat box the Ohio 4 H program Facebook page. Um, is where you find information on that. So I don't have the actual link for it, but and it's that's just Ohio State 4-H dog program under uh, Facebook. I'm looking at it right now. Okay, <laughs> I can't look it up on my phone while I'm because my son is actually using my phone yeah. to be in another session <laughs> right now. So I'm, no, I'm, it was super easy to find. We are at. Two minute warning. So does anybody have any other questions for Teresa? We know this year is a little bit different um, and things are, are gonna be different all across the board for our projects and judgings and different things. So, um, you know, we, we hope that everybody makes it through uh, <laughs> the, the different way we're doing things this year and then hopefully we'll be able to get back to normal next year with many of our projects. Um, so also you might prepare your dogs to 
be okay with people wearing masks, facial masks, because as a judge, we might be wearing those at your dog show. So we don't wanna freak out your dog. So practice with your dog with someone with face masks a lot. Yeah, and I'm betting that that will probably be the case if there are in-person shows, because I know that um, what the state has said for livestock shows is that all of the, the judges, um, judges have to wear masks for livestock shows. So I'm assuming that they will probably do something similar with dogs, dogs as well, because mm -hmm. judges have to lean down and get close to kids and animals and stuff. 